I am absolutely furious about this right now. My sister is 19 and four months pregnant. Father bailed and kicked her out of his place as soon as she told him, and my parents live on the other side of the country. She goes to school here in our state, so she doesn't want to move back to our tiny little town. Since she didn't have a place to stay, my wife and I offered to let her live with us until after the baby got here. It wasn't ideal, but we have the room and the money to let it happen. First thing I told my sister when she came here, whatever you need, tell me and I'll help you. First thing I told her, because I didn't want her worrying about things for the baby or food. We still have all our baby furniture and toys and clothes from when our son was born in our garage and it's in good condition. It's barely been over two months and on the first week my wife was complaining because she couldn't find her earrings. I didn't think anything. Stuff like that is easy to lose sometimes, but then it started to add up. From her earrings, then one of my watches, a necklace, a pair of new shoes that we bought for our son, some of my wife's jewelry, my class ring, all this stuff was going missing, and it didn't click for me until I noted a few missing $20 bills from my wallet. At first I thought maybe it was my son, but honestly, the kid's seven and still too honest. He cried once after he took an extra donut from the table and confessed immediately, so I doubted that he was the culprit. I confronted my sister, and it took a lot of grilling before she fessed up. Her defense was that she just wanted to make a little extra cash on the side for the baby. I was so furious with her. After telling her to come to me for anything she needs with the baby, she resorted to going behind my back and stealing from my family? I explained just how wrong she was to do this after she set a roof over her head, food, and being told to come to us with whatever she needs help with. She apologized many times, but I told her she was going to have to pack her bags and leave. I'll give her two weeks to find a new place, but she better be gone by then. This just upset my sister more. She begged me to give her a second chance, but I feel like the trust has been broken. She wanted to stay here to continue school, but she'll have to find a way to support herself. If she can't, then she can move back in with our parents. Speaking of parents, they've been on top of me for the last few days over this, and I can't just kick her out when she has a child on the way. I've explained what she was doing, However, they still think I'm wrong here and need to give her another chance. The issue is, how will we know she won't be more sneaky about it? It's just not a risk I'm willing to take, and my wife is just as upset about this as I am. This hasn't stopped my parents from berating me all the time over our choice, and now I'm not sure if I'm being the idiot instead of giving her another chance. Definitely not the idiot. She stole multiple times from you and your wife, that means she already has had a second chance and a third chance, etc., to redeem herself. I would not want a thief in my house. She can go live with your parents and steal from them if they feel so strongly about it. Honestly, that's the part that hits the hardest here. If she stole one thing, super messed up and all that, but stealing shoes from a kid, watches, earrings, necklace, a class ring, and more? Jesus, what did she think? OP and his wife weren't going to notice? How do you think someone isn't going to notice their new kid's shoes vanished? You can't lose shoes. You wear them or store them. Stealing a laundry list of items and expecting no consequences isn't stupidity. It's insulting. That's like, yeah, not only will I steal from you, I'm going to make it blatant because I honestly don't care about you. It's another layer on top of the stealing. Yup, not the idiot. That's seriously what having a kid has inspired her to do? Become a thief? I understand those without means, but she had means. You offered her what she needed. She shouldn't be having a child yet. Not that it's up to me, but she's clearly not mature nor capable. Unfortunately, she is. It's time for mom and dad to parent her, book her a flight home, and take her to the airport. It sucks, but she's made her choices, and now the baby comes first. She can finish school in another state. Mom and dad are only guilty OP because they know the next logical place for her is back home with them. And they, no matter how much they may hate it, will have to take her in, even if they would almost rather she be out on the street. So they guilt OP into keeping her where she is. I have a feeling being pregnant isn't the only reason the boyfriend kicked her out. It may very well have been simply the last straw. 
OP locked down anything of value. You've now given her 14 days to ransack your place. My father had me quite late in life, which sadly also meant that I lost him sooner. He wasn't super rich, but he had some money in his name, so there was a decent inheritance. Of that inheritance, 50% went to my mother and 25% to my half-sister and me each. We both spent the money quite differently. I put half of it in the bank and used the other half as a down payment on a house, allowing me to become a homeowner quite early. My half-sister and her then-boyfriend used it on a business idea that didn't work out, and then after they broke up, she used it on another idea that also did not work out. After breaking up with her boyfriend, she also found out that she was pregnant, but decided to become a single mom. She basically blew all the money in under five years. About one and a half years ago, she started asking me for small loans. First, it was for Mona's, niece's school supplies. Then it was for her car, etc. Anyway, I loaned her about 500 euro and never saw any of it back. Recently, she asked me for something again, and I told her I was not giving her an extra cent until she gave me back what she borrowed. Anyway, this is when it hit the fan. She said it's unfair that she has a child to take care of, that I don't need the money as much, and that I'll inherit more once my mom dies because I'm her only child. She said she feels like she should get more of the inheritance because she has Mona. I pretty much laughed at the notion, told her that's ridiculous and that she was being rude about my mom and told her that her bad finances are a direct result of her bad life choices and that she's getting nothing. I said that she had no legal claim to anything, true, and I still expect 500 back. She started crying on the phone, but I just hung up. I might have been harsh, but I still feel the situation is of her own doing, and she'd likely blow any money I would give her anyway. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She made choices, and those choices have consequences. Were you a bit harsh? No harsher than she was, when she said you'll get more money when your mom dies. She needs to be an example to her daughter and manage her own crap. Not the idiot. She sounds quite entitled and bratty. She didn't have Mona when your dad died and she chose to blow through it. Choices have consequences and I think you're right to hold firm and not give her any more money, though I don't think you'll ever get that 500 euro back. Yeah, for OP's mental health, she should write that 500 euro out of her life it's not going to do her any good to hold on to the idea that her sister needs to pay her back, even if she should. In general, don't lend money to family. If you want to help them out by gifting them money, then do it without expecting it to be returned. But don't lend out money that you're relying on coming back to you. It's a good way to ruin relationships. While I fully agree with the judgment and that the sister is entitled, I have a little more sympathy for the sister than most here. In my reading, Sister's dad remarried late in life to a presumably much younger woman, had a kid, and then left half his money to the new woman, who in turn presumably will leave it to OP and not Sister, her likely much older stepdaughter. So, while Sister is not entitled to anything, her dad didn't want to leave her. I can understand why she thinks it sucks that 75% of her dad's inheritance will ultimately likely go to OP. It doesn't make her actions right, just a bit of sympathy. My ex and I divorced when our daughter, teen, was a baby because I found out he had been cheating on me and had a son a few months younger than our kid. He married his side piece, who at the time came from a rich family and regularly threw shade at us. He took care of her. I will never negate that. But during the first years of their marriage, my ex neglected our daughter emotionally because he was too focused on the wife until she also tried to get my ex to stop paying child support and giving up his half of custody because she wanted him to, quote, leave his old life behind, including his daughter. Finally, my ex opened his eyes, and they separated for almost a full year until she promised to give up and attend therapy with him. My daughter and her brother don't have a relationship since his mother refused to let him have one. The only time they had together was when they were both with their dad, but nothing substantial came from it. I remarried when she was a little girl, and my husband and I set college funds for her, my stepchildren, and our baby. Her dad also contributed to the fund, but his contribution apportioned about 6,014 years since his wife restricted him financially. 
Now, I'm not really sure what happened, but my ex's wife lost all of our family's money, so they went bankrupt almost two years ago. To survive, they had to sell their house, drain their savings, and eventually their kid's college fund. I knew all of this because they came to my house a week ago because they wanted to talk. My ex explained what had happened and then asked if I would be willing to give his son half of his sister's college fund. I said no, that the money belonged to our daughter and she had every right to keep it. Then his wife said I should give back what my ex gave. And I said, sure, but he only put 6,000 towards the fund. So they should only expect that amount. She called me a liar because I smooched all of his money. And while I say that he gave a larger quantity for child support, that was mandatory and that money won't be given back. I could see he was sad, but his wife accused me of ripping his son's education from his hands just because I was a bitter witch. I said that either way, their son wasn't my responsibility and to not bother my daughter or me with that again. Before they left, my ex asked me to please reconsider because it's not fair that only one of them goes to college debt-free. I still said no. Not the idiot. Wow, transference much? That's about the time I'd be like, there's the door. Let it hit you from behind on your way out. If their financial situation is as bad as they say, the kid will qualify for all kinds of grants and loans, if in the U.S. And community college is also a great resource. And that is their problem to deal with, not yours. Do not give one cent of your daughter's money away. What her father paid in is hers and should not be paid back. Furthermore, your husband and his wife have behaved horribly toward you and your daughter and they have no right coming to you for money. It's their bed. Let them lie in it. If the roles were reversed, would they pay for your daughter's school? If the roles were reversed, OP would probably not have even been let into their home to plead her case. OP, this behavior by your ex and his wife is just gross. Also, half or even all of the 6000 wouldn't put anyone through college debt-free, at least if you're in the U.S. Furthermore, I'm going to hazard unsupported speculation and say that may not be what they want the money for anyway. If they already blew through their own college nest egg, I'm guessing that that wasn't a high priority for them. My math teacher is Mr. Ben, and he's literally like 70 years old, but he's a really good math teacher, and he's really funny. I hated him because he made me do my work, but after sixth grade tutoring, he helped me so much. I'm in geometry as a freshman, but he's weird, no doubt. So there's this total witch senior in my geometry class who is just a loser, but popular. Well, she was watching TikTok videos of people popping zits and no matter what, she would not stop. No matter how many times Mr. Ben asked her to stop. He even said that she could go into the quad and watch videos just don't disrupt the people wanting to learn. She refused, so he said if she wanted to see blackheads, he had plenty on his back and lifted up his shirt. Everyone freaked out, but it was like nothing. I don't even think he got above like his lower waist, but all the dramatic witches started crying and screaming like something horrible had happened. We are supposed to be talked to by the vice principal, and we have an indefinite sub. Everyone is like, go crazy, snap and they all want us to tell a story to get him fired. I said I was going to tell the truth, but the girl's boyfriend said he'd do something bad to me if I don't tell the same story as the rest of the class. What should I do here? You should tell the truth about the teacher, and you should also report the idiot who threatened you. Bullying should have a zero tolerance policy in any school. It's not okay to be threatened into lying. Do the right thing and tell the complete truth about your teacher, about this bully, and about the kids planning to lie. Tell your parents or a school counselor to back you up because you refuse to lie. Don't lie. You will ruin this man's life. You could get into a lot of trouble. And I'm sure when you're an adult, you'll regret lying because you would have gotten a nice old yet weird man fired from his job. He has dedicated his life to over some non incident. He won't be able to get another job afterwards. So you will literally destroy his life. Do the right thing. As someone who has a lot of family members in education and a lot of personal experience as well, this teacher will be punished, period. It is clear that he was having fun, but it is still never appropriate to act the way he did in the classroom. I'm not suggesting he behaved in a creepy way, nor I'm saying that he's a bad person or a bad teacher. However, 
He clearly broke an ethical rule for teachers, and he should be properly reprimanded. I have always been the outsider in my family. My interests never aligned with theirs. I was left out of most things. I didn't really let it bother me too much. I just did my thing and eventually was engaged to a woman my family loved. We moved interstate from my work. My family used to call regularly, mostly chatting with my ex. We tried for a child and she fell pregnant, and my family and hers were ecstatic. One day, however, she lost it. Things got tough, and eventually we separated. I was devastated to say the least. I struggled and barely went through the motions of life for a few years after the event. During these toughest times of my life, I found my family calling less and texting less. Never heard from brother or sister, not even to give condolences when we lost our child. I found I was calling my parents more to initiate conversations. Finally, one day I just stopped calling. I didn't get a text or a call for 10 months, not even on my birthday. When they did eventually call, I didn't bother answering. They couldn't check up on me during my worst of times, and I couldn't be bothered talking to them at all. I almost ended it all. A year or two later, I got two separate invitations to weddings. My brother and sister were both getting married in the same year. I just tossed the invites in the bin. I had not even talked to them in years. They would not miss me at the weddings. A week before my brother's wedding, my mother texted me and asked me if I was going. I said no. She then began to barrage me with texts about how my brother wanted me there and that I should go. I kindly informed her my brother would not care. We've not spoken and I'm not interested. Well, mother started scolding me and started telling me, what will everyone think if his own brother doesn't show up? It would be embarrassing to the family. I replied, your family. I have a new family. I have friends that call me every day. I have friends that want me to be with them at Christmas and birthdays. These friends are more family than you ever were. These friends were worried when my relationship broke down. She stopped texting. After a while, I wondered if I had gone too far. I never regretted not going to the weddings. I think my mother showed my father what I said. A month later, he apologized and said he should have been there for me more and now often texts to check up on me. He doesn't always expect a reply, but seems happy when I do. I sometimes see how close some people are with their blood families, and I do wish I had that. Then feel bad for how I talk to my mother, but I soon get angry again that they didn't even try to check up on me in my darkest times, and I had to do all the work communicating until I gave up. Anyway, am I the idiot for saying what I did to my mother and not showing up to the weddings? Not the idiot. You told her the truth. You were hurt that your own blood family wouldn't be there for you in your lowest moments and then have the audacity to remember you only to save face during your siblings' weddings. Not sure if it means anything, but at least your dad is checking up on you now. If your mom and siblings do care, they will reach out to you, not the other way around. You're in a better place with your chosen family, and that matters. Dude, I've lived almost this exact story, except I'm the one who had the loss. It was an absolute nightmare, but worse so. It's like overnight I was dropped from all family and community in my life. I was too depressing to be around. One couple actually admitted this. I went radio silent, and nobody came looking for me. I noticed at some point the same shift happening with my family, me reaching out to them or going to visit only to never ever have it reciprocated. So I just stopped and waited. I haven't spoken to my mom in about a year now. I'm so sorry you have to walk this path. I'm sorry you were so alone at this time, but you cutting your family out because they didn't meet an expectation that you didn't communicate is on you a little. They definitely could have done more, of course, but no one is psychic. No one was intentionally ignoring you. Also, that being said, you're an adult who is completely entitled to decide who is and isn't in your life. No idiots here. Sorry the family didn't make more of an effort. 